Hello everyone, this is Dmitry from Galileo Sky and we continue learning about the configurator software features. The next page in settings is inputs outputs. On this page we can specify how the device considers signals on the universal inputs and manually change the state of the device outputs. Tracking device inputs are universal and work independently. It means that the device can process different types of signal on different inputs simultaneously. Universal inputs allow you to measure the voltage and work as a discrete inputs. You can also measure the frequency up to 4 kHz, count pulses and connect sensors that work with the Wigan protocol. Universal inputs can measure the voltage from 0 to 33 volts DC. We already have a series of videos where we discuss in details universal inputs common applications. As usual, you can find the links in the description to this video. In a mean value mode, the device measures the voltage on the device input. Additionally, you can specify the discrete signal ranges. Green zone is the zone of the logical one. When the voltage is in the green zone, the device considers this input as active. Active inputs are shown by the red color on the device tab. The red zone is the zone of the logical zero. The rest yellow part of the scale is the undefined state. On practice, when the voltage is in the yellow zone, the input has the previous state. For example, if the voltage was in the red zone before moving to the yellow zone, the device will still consider the input state as inactive. Please note that each change of the logical state for all of the device universal inputs leads to saving the additional data point to the archive. For Galileo Sky 7X and Galileo Sky 10 devices, the pull-up feature is available. When this feature is active, the voltage of about 2.2 volts is present on the device input. This feature allows us to connect, for example, the button to the vehicle mass instead of the power supply line, which is much easier during the installation process. So, if we want the input to be active when the button is pressed, all we need to do is to set the logical one area near the zero voltage level. In a pulses count mode, instead of the voltage, in the same data tech you receive the total number of pulses detected on the device input. This mode can be useful, for example, when you use flow meters in your project. This is the type of the sensor that sends pulses when the liquid passes through it. The liquid volume to amount of pulses ratio depends on the model of the sensor and should be available in the sensor's manual. We need to specify the voltage level that separates the logical zero from logical one. It is recommended to set the threshold at 50-60% level of the sensor's output signal amplitude. The pull-up is also available in this mode and you can also enable the null pulses after point record feature. It allows you to avoid the tag overflow and when it's enabled, the device sends the number of pulses that were detected on the input since the previous data point was saved. When you use this feature, the liquid consumption sum value must be arranged on the software side. The frequency count mode allows you to get the number of pulses received by the input per second. This mode can be useful when you have, for example, the fuel level sensor with the frequency output signal. As in a previous mode, you need to set the discrete signal level at 50-60% of the sensor signal amplitude. Polar feature is also available in this mode. In a vegan protocol mode, you need to choose a pair of inputs that will work as data 1 and data 2 digital inputs. This mode is used when you are connecting to the device, card readers and sensors that support this protocol. On this page, we can also set the discrete levels for the device power supply voltage. As in case with the device inputs, the change in the logical state of the power supply voltage leads to the additional data point. This way, you will always know when and where the external power supply was disconnected from the device. Device outputs can be in an open or active state or close or inactive state. In active state, the output has the zero level voltage of the device power supply. It means that the active output is connected to the ground level of the voltage. When the output is inactive, it is in a disconnected state. It means that the load that you want to activate with the device output must be connected to the plus of the power supply voltage and the device output to be operational. Device outputs provide you the current up to 200 mA. And if you want to work with the more powerful load, you need to use the relay. On practice, device outputs are usually controlled by easy logic algorithms or by the firmware via the corresponding settings on a signaling tab, which we will discuss in one of the following videos. On this page, we can see the current state of the device outputs and change output states manually for tests. That's all for today. In following videos, we will continue getting familiar with the configurator application. Dmitry was with you. See you in the next video.